Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. This night, we conclude the first season of our story with Season 1, Episode 8, Virtue Overthrow. Let's meet our vampires of questionable virtue. Hi, I'm Alex Ward, and I'm playing Isaac, a Zumitzi. Hi, I'm Mayana Baron, and I'm playing Seraph, a Ravnos. Hi, I'm Maria Iyengar, and I'm playing uh, Fuego, a minor murderer Ventro. <laughs> I'm Joey Rasul, I'm playing Ray, the minor murderer as well, <laughs> Gangrel. Mm. Sensing a trend here. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if that trend continues and what consequences it has if it does. Before we start our finale of this season, let's talk about a few things that we spoke about at the very beginning of this chronicle. And the first is consent and safety are critical parts of any good role-playing experience, and we do take it very, very seriously. The players and I have been through session zeros and more than one session zeros together. Uh, to talk about how we will handle salt consent and safety issues. I know there are lines and veils, and we will respect those throughout the story. Since it's come up occasionally, we do use the rule of cool. Sometimes when the narrative is moving very quickly, we'll make rulings or decisions that emphasize the narrative and character opportunity rather than the strict ruling as written. Now let's thank some special people who made this season possible. We'd like to thank Black Magic Designs for these marvelous cameras and their support equipment that bring us to you in very unliving color. Renegade Game Studios for making sure that we have all the books and hunger dice we could possibly want. Dogmite Games for the screen and our players' dice boxes. And then finally, Backblaze Cloud Storage. And remember that Yev is canon. As a prologue, let's look back a little bit over the season and think about where we started. Being a fledgling kindred in the world of darkness is, in some ways, the most fundamental vampire experience. These are the nights of bared fangs, running on raw nerves, moment-to-moment -moment struggles with the beast, long before most of the kindred really know what they're doing. They're monsters just so close to being human, and yet not. They're monsters worried about bigger monsters. They're monsters worried about all the things they don't know and they don't know a great deal yet. These Anarchs survive night to night, forming loose groups, and mistakes are inevitable in this particular situation. They're trying to keep ahead of calamity, even as they feel the excitement of the unpredictable. The Ancilla, the Elders, the ancient creatures among the kindred, they know what they're going to be doing a year from now, five years, ten years from tonight. Often young kindred can't even see beyond the next ten minutes. And so, Coterie becomes key very quickly, and most kindred learn this early in their own lives. They learn often that this is all the vampire has, just themselves and their Coterie. And it's imperfect. It's a kind of a found family of the night. If they want to survive, well, this is probably the best way to do it. With this firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story.
vampires, some housekeeping. You begin tonight at one hunger. Several nights have passed since you were last together at the cage. If your willpower is damaged superficially, you can now recover that damage, the equivalent of whichever is higher, your resolve or your composure. Except you, Ray, because you took aggravated willpower damage. Mm. But you have actively and directly pursued your ambition. So you too should recover your willpower. All right. There is a mysterious island in the East River, just off the Bronx. In fact, you can see it from the riverside in front of the cage. It has a human population of exactly zero. Few people in New York City even know about it. And those who do have never been here because no one is allowed to visit North Brother Island. It sits in the tidal strait that was once known as the Hellgate, a dangerous stretch of river that wrecked hundreds of sailing ships and deposited their wreckage on the shore of these islands and on the shore of the Bronx, too, before it was tamed by modern engineering. In the late 19th century, this island was chosen as the new home for Riverside Hospital, a quarantine hospital for New Yorkers with serious illnesses such as smallpox or tuberculosis. In fact, its most famous resident was none other than Typhoid Mary, a person who was obliged to remain on the island for a quarter of a century to prevent her from spreading the deadly disease to the city. So, imagine it now as we approach the island in a small boat, its motor pushing us slowly but inexorably across the darkly flowing waters of the East River. Perhaps images come uncomfortably to mind of Charon guiding his vessel across the river Styx. In the lights of Manhattan, its famous skyline glowing brightly against the low clouds passes to the right, sliding off the horizon. The island ahead of you is just a black shape in the river. The hospital itself is long gone, but there are extensive ruins of huge brick and wooden buildings here, peeking out from the canopy of trees. And like most abandoned places, it's overgrown with vegetation, ivy, weeds, tall grasses, a shadow of its former self. The boat's small water churns, propelling you toward an old ruined pier, the wooden pilings marching away from the land, rising above the surface of the river like old wooden teeth. This appears to be the only safe landing spot, sparse it is, and so this is where you dock the boat. I appreciate you all taking this part of the evening to come with me, as I said, this person will be able to answer some of the questions that I believe you have. And uh, just give you an idea of some of the other things in this world. Yeah. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. I'm not the only one thinking it, right? No, not at all. Could you take the glasses off? Sure, I don't know why. Okay, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. Isaac, what do they see when you what? remove your glasses? They see Isaac the way he would normally present himself, except a little more, a little better, a little different, like an idealized version of what one would want themselves to look like. Okay. 
Okay. What? Are you doing like a mind thing? I try to use unswayable mind. <laughs> <laughs> unswayable mind, you are afraid that he might be trying to Glamour affect me? you or yeah, I don't know. create some sort of illusion yeah. that might interfere with your perception of the world? Yep. Hmm. All right. Look, Seraph's got chemistry. I don't know what's happening right now. He's hot and I'm confused. Hot and confused. Well, Unswayable Mind is free. You don't have to make yeah. a rouse check or call upon the power of the blood. And it does fortify your mind against unwanted effects. It's pretty wanted. But even after ensuring that you can better resist mental falsehoods, his face doesn't change. No, it is not a mind thing, as you say. Uh, okay, well, um, you look great. Thank yeah. you. It huh. is a trade secret. Oh, okay. Cool. That's great. I can't, she's just not quite making eye contact anymore. Yeah. I want to say, um, just to, like, put to bed some of the, like, you know, weird tension from a little while ago, hmm. um... I apologize for being tense and terse with you. Um, it's hard to know who to trust. That's fair and smart. Yeah. But I think I, and I don't speak for anyone but me, I have to trust someone. So I'm going to trust you. So thank you. Well, I appreciate your trust. And I'm sorry if I came off a little less than polite. I um, wanted you to understand the gravity of the situation, and I want you to also be very clear. I don't care that you did what you did. I just wanted to make sure you were being smart about it. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. We all have things we've done. Hey, can you wink at me real quick? Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> Love it here. You're welcome. This is great. Now, um, just to uh, wrap something up. Mm. I did collect the skull we needed. So oh my god. So something we can take care of at some point at our leisure. It has been acquired. Forgot. I completely <sighs> forgot. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you were but... all busy with other things, and I thought it would be uh, best if I just went and got it. Yeah. That's one down. What about the white? I haven't taken care of that. We'll still have that on our to-do list. Did you have any trouble? You went over to Atlas, yeah? Was it there? No, the white was not. No, the, the skull. skull. Oh, yes, that's where it was, and I, um, mm, there were others there, a kindred and some security, and oh, they were uh, appropriately cowed. Okay. And Ones that live in our territory, or? No, Camarilla. Oh, okay. Huh. I supposedly stole the skull from a certain Kindred that I do not know, um, the, by the name of Rafferty. And, uh, Hold on. I, Sorry. One more time? You sure? About that name? That was the name that was told to me. Oh, fuck. Apparently that was... Mm -hmm. Why? What is That's that? my sire. And uh -huh. I immediately go and fish out the yeah. gun. <laughs> she produces a... From my purse and the note that's just the letter R. The rest is Ra mm. Rafferty. It's a nine millimeter pistol. It's brand new. Probably oh. never been fired. Uh, I checked the clip. Are these normal bullets? They certainly are. Ah, well then Angela does not need to complete that mission. How the f Question for another day. Not worried about it. Okay, um, yeah, yes. thank so you. So apparently I have taken the skull from the possession of your sire. So I'm sure we will have to deal with that at some point. Okay. Yeah, you know, are you like worried about no. that at all? I have a lot of anxiety and feelings about this and you seem as calm as you always are, and I don't know what to do with that. I have never met Rafferty, and have no idea of his capabilities, so until I know those things, I won't worry about them. Did you know yeah. your sire was keeping a warehouse on our block? Do I look like I know any fucking thing about my sire? Like, <sighs> I don't f freak out and start crying when I get a note from him from Simone I'm just gonna in the quietly fighting start reading Argus's journal and scanning <laughs> over it mm. with my phone. Um, so, you're using your phone mm -hmm. to Translate. Yeah, I'm gonna use like the Google camera feature that they have. <laughs> Slow going. Yeah. Not the most convenient place to do that in a little boat in the middle of the East River at night. This but doesn't involve me, so I just <laughs> <laughs> Despite that, mm -hmm. let me give you a general impression of the first few pages. Okay. It is indeed a journal. 
and right. not just a random collection of you know, notes. Mm -hmm. It appears to be an account of Argus's early nights as a kindred. Okay. And it suggests that his travels began somewhere in Europe. Okay. It talks a lot about the difficulty of adjusting to unlife and mm. some of the challenges that he had to experience and learn from. It's going to be fascinating reading when you have more time to really dig into it. He also had the habit of sketching mm -hmm. interesting individuals, places, and things that he saw. Mm. The, um, so, uh, unfortunately, it, it is an interesting turn of events, but yeah. uh, it is... How do I break this down? I don't worry about things as much as possible. Because if, another, if I anger another kindred and they can kill me, they will. If they can't, I will still be alive. So I have no okay. real choice in the matter. Yeah. So I don't worry about it until it becomes an active problem in my existence. On that note, sure. we are going to meet my sire now. Yeah. As I'm sure you've gathered, uh, myself and, by extension, my sire, find politeness very important. Good call. So, top manners when you meet them. It's talking to you. Is excessively important, and I cannot stress it enough. All right, I'm in a good mood tonight. Are you? That's rare. Let's not piss him off before we get back. You're so right. <laughs> but I hope you all had a chance to think about some things over the last couple nights. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Yes, okay. No, I just I also it. thought about some things in the time that we were not all in the same space. Yes. Oh, I just We know no one said anything. I just thought you were gonna say something. You good? Like I said, I'm in as good a mood as possible tonight. Great. All right, fine. Great. Mm. Isaac, is yeah. Angela or Michael with you in the boat? No. They are excluded from this expedition. Yeah, they, uh, Michael drove me, and um, Angela is in that car, and they're waiting for us to return, <laughs> but did not come on the boat. So you are guiding the boat? Yes. You have done this before? Yes. You know where to go. Mm -hmm. You know where to dock it. When Isaac cuts the motor of the boat and lets it drift forward the last few feet to bump up against those old wooden pilings and the rotting dock they support, the only sounds you can hear are the current of the river, the very, very distant sounds of traffic from the nearest bridge. The island itself. Hmm. Well, the air here feels unnaturally thick and heavy, which is strange because at this time of year, in the early spring, it should feel thin and cool and crisp. You can see a broken, overgrown asphalt path leading away from the dock and toward collapsing buildings. There are no signs anywhere to tell you what any of this stuff was, what its purpose was in better days. Isaac, have you brought any light? I did not, but I believe people have phones if they need light. Look, I still have the flashlight I got. Great. No. Oh, that right. would be helpful, considering only some of us can see in the dark. Okay, okay. you don't have to rub it in all the time. So using the high-powered flashlight yeah. that you took from the security guard in the light of a cell phone, you can safely traverse the broken asphalt pathway. You are guiding them? Yes, I'm guiding them. Are you taking them to the right place? Yes. 
Um, it would probably be best to initially let them do the talking and then kind of open up the floor for questions later. Okay. I don't know. I've only interacted with them one-on-one, -on -one, mm. and I've never seen them talk to anyone else. Don't take that as a compliment. I mean, I literally have not seen them talk to anybody oh, else. They live by themselves out here? Yes, as far as I'm aware. Should we have, like, brought something? How do they feed out here? Those are all good questions that I don't have answers for. Got it. Oh, shit. I don't know a lot about them. Good. Okay. Uh, they perceive time differently. They're older. Uh, things are not as immediate. So, they only tell me things when they feel it's necessary to learn them. Which can be frustrating. And I keep walking. <laughs> hmm. The very large structure ahead seems like a gaping black eye in the trees. A darkness ringed by a flat scar of singed walls, walls that have been burned. There's a scent hanging in the night air, familiar and yet far, far away, almost but not quite unlike mortal blood. And then a light, a single yellow-orange flare, like a candle being lit, illuminates one of the broken ground floor windows. Uh, is that there... means we're coming by land? Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? I think it's a boat joke, or like boat a joke. like a early America joke. That one actually went over my head. Interesting. It's a yeah. Paul Revere reference. That's what it. Mm -hmm. Oh. I got oh it. my God! I forget I how it. young all of them are sometimes. So I got it. I just didn't finish school. Mm -hmm. Um. What do you mean? Like I was just grade? bad at history. What? Like what grade? Oh, I stopped. Um, I, I sort of started high school. Oh, okay. And then left. Okay. No judgment. Um, I walk up to the door and knock. As you raise your hand, form a fist, knock the door, open slowly. Beyond, you see a parlor, straight out of a Charles Dickens novel. 19th century styling and decorations in excellent condition. Everything from the carpets to the drapes, from the mm. paintings, the art, and the furniture, could be from a movie set of the 19th century. You didn't take any decoration lessons from... Just, just... It is illuminated by candlelight. Your beasts stir a little uncomfortably at the sight of so many little flickering flames, but it's not enough to test your fear. There is a figure standing in the room, wearing, perhaps unsurprisingly, a 19th century gentleman's attire, a tailcoat with velvet lapels, riding boots, a vest, a gold pocket watch and chain, a crisp white shirt with a starched collar, and a very narrow black Necktie, perhaps the only concession to more modern fashion. Face is angular with high brow, thin gray hair swept back from the temples, an iron gray mustache. The hands are long, sensitive fingers. And the figure still standing inside the parlor, bows deeply towards you, stands upright and says, 
enter freely. Much appreciated. Thank you. Go safely. Thank you very much. Yes. And leave something of the happiness that you bring. I curtsy. Thank you. I, nobody, I also nobody gets it. Okay. Please come in and welcome to my house. Thank you. Thank you. So mm. nice to meet you. I am Vaklav. You are welcome here. You notice, too, that the room is filled with small art objects, little sculptures, ceramic bowls, crystal goblets, glass figurines. There could be genuine antiques. Mm. Please make yourselves comfortable. He indicates four late Victorian overstuffed, upholstered easy chairs, the high backs, the wing arms for your use. I appreciate you taking the time to see us. It is good to see you, my child. It's nice to see you as well. And you will introduce me to your associates. Yes, uh, apologies. Uh, this would be Seraph. This is... Lack of the font. Lack of the font. Fuego. Marco. Lack of the Marco. fire. Yeah, either one. And Ray. Lack of the sun. Exactly. Hmm. It is a pleasure to welcome you to my abode. It is rare that I have visitors, so I am quite pleased to entertain you this evening. As I said, please make yourselves comfortable. I sit. I turn the chairs out for Seraph and Fuego as we sit. Mm. Thank you, I sit. Thank you. And then take my seat as well. Hey, gentleman. Mm. Manners are so important, don't you think? Gotta hold on to what keeps us grounded. Hmm, an interesting point of view. Would you care for a refreshment? Yes, thank you. Yes. Of course. It's like being in an old film. The door behind him swings silently open, and an older gentleman, who must be the butler, judging from his long tails, his cravat, and the tray he carries glides into the room. On the tray is a crystal decanter, four glasses, and the decanter is, of course, filled with red liquid. The butler offers it to each of you in turn. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. It is warm, very fresh, oh. recently decanted, you might say, mortal blood. Now, Fuego, yeah. you are in luck. You can drink this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she did like the fake sip. I was like, no, no, no. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever strange mystical condition limits the nourishment that you can take also lets you know if what you're about to drink is in fact drinkable. And it is. Thank you, you appear um, disturbed. Oh, no, not at all. This is great, actually. Thank you. I'm a bit of a picky eater, but sorry. Ah. Thanks. Thank you. I did not know what to inquire about preferences. Ah, yes. Um, apologies. I was not totally aware you had a feeding preference. Oh, yeah, um, only people that were born in the Bronx, actually. Well, then it worked out, I guess. Mm. Yeah, well. Only those who are born in the borough. Yeah. Interesting. If I may be permitted to give you a small bit of unsolicited counsel. Yes, thank you. 
outside your compatriots, your coterie. Do not speak of this. Oh. Yeah. It gives others power over you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. We, um, having newly become a coterie. Mm. Yes. We, of course, all hear the requiem mass for one vampire, but mm. now this song is joined. Yes. Mm. Um, they are all younger than I. Mm. So a new chorus forms, opening up possibilities. Uh, and Isaac has been very helpful in helping us carry a tune. Hmm. What is the purpose of this unkindness of beasts? We have been, hmm, we have acquired some territory in the Bronx. I congratulate you. Thank you. Well and done. I did my best. It is gratifying to know that whatever else he may be, Richter observes the courtesies. Yes. And in being put in charge of that territory, we have now become a coterie because of that. Mm. As we were all put in charge of the same territory. And so each of you bring your own individual song. Yes. And now these songs begin to play over and through one another. Hmm? Yes, we are yes. rehearsing. So what will your dance be? I think that is, we are just finding it out. Mm. It has only been a number of nights, very few, that we have been a group, but I contacted you because most of them either do not know or have a unpleasant relationship with their sire. So it often is, mm. especially for the rebellious among us. <laughs> and they were lacking much information about kindred life in general. My child, have I not instructed you well? No, you have very much, and I have imparted that. But I just wanted them to see what it is to be not this young. Hmm. Some perspective. It will be my great honor to answer your questions about these matters. But, <clears throat> my joke of welcoming aside, I am not so old. It is true, it is rare that I entertain visitors and get to indulge my taste for things of the past, but a little over perhaps a century and a quarter, no more. And in this long period, I have had a long sleep. Ah, uh, okay. allow me to enter. Mm. You have been invited as a guest. It is my responsibility to make sure that your every comfort is cater to here, and that you will go safely as well. It would bring enormous shame upon this house if it were to be otherwise. So you should feel free to speak. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, a long sleep, what is, yeah. Mm. The torpor, yes. Uh, when we receive more damage than our physical forms can endure, and yet we do not pass into the final death. We sleep. And this sleep may be brief or long, depending on many variables. It is possible for some to choose to sleep for a time. I chose to sleep. I was dissatisfied with the world, but we cannot sleep forever. That would be death. 
And how do you feel about the one you woke up into? Hmm. A direct question. Hmm. You prefer to cut to the chase. I found that my uh, patience is a little shorter in my new life. Yes, I can smell your, your beast. It rides your shoulder, whispers in your ear, urges you to do things that are at best ill-advised and yet freeing. So it makes it easier to talk if I can shove him out of the way as quickly as possible. Allow me to return your courtesy of honesty. I do not, as you might guess, find this world entirely comfortable. Mm. But I have things to do, things to accomplish, and it is necessary that I am here now. Has anyone else presumed to claim dominion over this island? I know <laughs> the factions in the night are all vying over different territories, and if you've been asleep, what kept this island in your control? How many people, mortals, did you see on your short walk? None. Fair enough. Did you see any animals? Uh, Not even the oh. seagulls? No. Mm -mm. Oh. So what reason would our kind have to come here? It is true, occasionally, there are unwanted visitors, unwelcome guests. It is my pleasure to receive them, but we seldom say farewell. They tend to stay. Cool. Wow. So, Ooh. however, there are some among the Anarch movement that know of my existence and my home. Your Baron Tork, for instance. Have yet to make his acquaintance. Mm. Oh, what's his whole deal? What do you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Please ask. What do you know about Baron Tork? He craves power and personal authority. It is possible that the fire of rebellion still burns within him, but I see little evidence of it. He has been preaching rebellion against the Camarilla, the Ivory Tower, for, well, as long as I have been here. Well, he has not been here so long. What is your opinion of the Camarilla? Hmm. It was never to my clan's taste. I do not say that the ivory tower is altogether wrong in many things, but it is not altogether right either. I prefer my solitude. I admire its courtesies, its good manners, its clear establishment of rules, but that den of vipers is not for me. I admire their dedication to the first tradition, the masquerade. Make no mistake, they would not have you even if you wished to join them. I, I don't care about that. I don't want to join them. They have not always controlled New York. In fact, until perhaps two decades ago, they were the underdogs and they were very close to being wiped out, extinguished, destroyed. How did that change? Mm. Their great enemy, the Sabbat, the Black Hand, as they sometimes call themselves, or the Sword of Cain. Mm. Dramatic. Uh, the Sabbat is nothing if not dramatic. <laughs> And with good reason, this, this medieval vampire death cult relies on fear. But you asked what happened. 
is not entirely clear, but careful sharing of information, spies, a few special guests upon the stage, and miscalculations in the Black Hand allowed the Camarilla to, what shall we say, stage a coup. Mm. And they drove their enemy from the city. The reason why, as I'm sure you've noticed, a lot of kindred that we meet who recognize what I am are uncomfortable. It's Uh. because traditionally, our clan was aligned with the Sabbat. Uh, the Sabbat will uh, take any vampire. Mm. But yes, once upon a time, our clan was prominent, along with our uncomfortable allies, the La Sombra. Okay, sorry. Um, Wait, so pushed to the brink of extinction, but they fought their way back. Why wouldn't the Camarilla want to bolster their numbers? Sorry, I'm still a little offended that they wouldn't have us if we wanted. Mm. I don't want to, but oh, like, why? Let me clarify. I apologize no, for that's not a- being unclear. Yeah, okay. You, the fire, they will have. And if you do not wish to be part of their organization, you must take great care. I assure you that you are wanted. It is Seraph who they would not have. Hmm. Why is that? The creatures who manage the affairs of the Ivory Tower are prejudiced. Against Ravnos? Against many. But your clan has never been welcome anywhere. Mm. Except in those rare instances where you make friends. Do you know nothing of your blood? I'm starting to learn. Some call you nomads, wanderers. Mm. I have heard Daredevil. <gasps> that tracks. <laughs> Doesn't it though? And the Camarilla reestablished itself as the preeminent vampire power in the city. And of course their ranks have grown, but not everyone is welcome in the club. Is it traditional for Ravnos to take ghouls? Hmm. I do not know the answer. Hmm. I suspect that it is left to the preference of the individual vampire. And is there a way for a preference to change? Ah. You object to the practice. I object to a particular person's practice. There is a mortal of your acquaintance who is in this state, and you wish this mortal to not be in this state. My mother. Interesting. Isaac, I was not aware your friends were so fascinating. I did not know this piece of information. Did I? I I don't think so. Yes, of course there are ways, but you may find some of them unpalatable. What are the options? Well, there is the obvious, of course. To remove her from this mortal coil, either permanently or as a kindred. The embrace. 
But if she ceases to drink the vitae of the one who keeps her as the thrall, she will, in time, become mere mortal once again. However, as you no doubt are aware, imbibing our verte freezes time, halts the progress of years. So, you see the problem. All that time catches up at once. That would be 25 years. Hmm. Sometimes there are few good choices, and yet we must choose. Can a child turn their parent? Yes, of course. There are no impediments to this, which I am aware. But you may find the relationship as or more difficult than it is now. What, what's it like being a sire? Hmm. An excellent question. And the answer is as varied as all of us. I take great pride in my choice of child. He has met, and in some cases, exceeded my expectations. As for the future, we shall, of course, watch and see. Hmm. I have known sires to despise their own childer, and childer to despise their sires. I think, on balance, the relationship is rarely satisfactory. Think of it. What must it be to choose to bring another into this? Not everyone who comes under the night thrives. While we're talking about sires, mm. I'm sorry. Uh, I've just been watching your two interaction and it seems good and cool. Is there maybe sometimes when the embrace happens and it's weirder and I don't know how to describe it. More, more tethered, more complicated than like normal, Are maybe? Are you in love with your sire? Okay, that's a big word. Um, maybe? Have you not received guidance in the matter of the bonding of blood? I mentioned a little bit about the process of ghoulification and the similarities that can in work with that. In, there are some similarities as to process of ghouling as there are to uh, blood bonding, as you said. To speak it plainly. Yeah. Since I see you are in need of guidance and it is my great pleasure to provide. Thank you. When a sire creates a child, of course, some quantity of vitae must be given in exchange for what is taken. Yeah. Among the many properties of our vitae is the possibility to create uh, an artificial attachment of the heart. Some have called this the blood bond. There are many words for it. If an individual drinks the vitae of the same vampire thrice in the course of one year. They will become so tightly bound, so artificially enamored, so in love with that vampire that one cannot say any longer that their will is their own. Okay, um, uh, you said uh, thrice. Um, what, 
I what if it's could it ever not be that much if it's less than just the once? Is that a thing? Each drink. how many times have you drank your slayer's blood? Just, what are you talking about? Just the one time when I was embraced. Then it is mere infatuation, and the longer you remain away from your sire, have no contact, no dealings, and perhaps a concentration of your will, the attachment will fade. Okay, you want that, right? Intellectually, yes. It's possible. I mean, I haven't seen my sire in a year, and I've well, I was about to say I turned out fine, but we know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel attached to my sire, if that eases your uh, mind at all. May I be permitted a question, Please. Mr. Ray? Mm. Do you know the one who brought you under the night? Not a clue. Unfortunate. Mm. Feel like it's helped me uh, avoid some complications. It is often the way with your clan in particular that this is done. The sire chooses someone who impresses them with strength or durability or a ferocity of instinct and the choice is made, the deed is done, and the sire vanishes into the night, never to be heard from again. There's no chance it's just random. There always has to be, does there have to be of course, intention behind it? It can be, of course, random chance. There are random embraces, mm. acts of passion gone terribly wrong, acts of violent, acts of remorse, where we feel regret for what we have done and bring a vessel, a victim, into this. Mm. It does not always have to be, as you say, intention. I think it is better when there is. I don't know which I'd prefer. Hmm. You, one night, may choose to do this. I shall be very curious to see how you choose to do it. I'm barely figuring out how to fend for myself let alone bringing someone else into yes, this. Yes, That is the conundrum of the young in our existence. But do not despair. Yours is the desperate power. Everyone else, even neonates, and certainly those older, will underestimate you. Hmm. They have their reasons, of course, but you can surprise them. Sometimes, it takes just a moment, one move of one piece on the board to completely alter the status quo. You can even surprise yourselves in wonderful and horrible ways. What can you do? What can I do? Hmm. What has Isaac taught you about us. Well, Isaac looks a little different. He's prettier. Did you do that? Is that a thing you all think? Yeah, he's shinier. Do you think him handsome? Yeah, absolutely. What? Mm. Yeah. I have never seen it myself, but um, as you say. Look at his cheekbones. Oh my God, sorry. Not to mm. be rude, but like, it's an easy sell. Mm -hmm. uh, as pleasing to the eye as he may be, I chose him for other qualities, but you asked what we can do. It is odd, isn't it? One would think that perhaps when two vampires, two kindred meet for the first time, they would 
immediately identify themselves by family. Hello, my name is Seraph of the Ravnos clan. Mm. But we don't, because knowledge is power, and to give so much power to another is rarely wise. Rarely wise. Isaac, what can we do? Ah, we, um, we have, some of us have the ability to, like you, sir, work with animals. Some of us have the ability, like myself, to do what you do, Fuego, to tell, put your will on people. And some of us have the ability to change our shape. Is that what that is? Yes. No, you say it. Is it permanent? It is as permanent as I want it to be. I could change it at any time. I've been learning new things. I congratulate you on your discovery. I was wondering how long it might take you. That's a new one. Yes, I have okay, cool. recently, uh, by accident, figured out how to change myself. To what extent? We'll see. But as of right now, things are a little different and okay. I'm learning. Those That's of great. us who are older can make more substantial changes not only in ourselves, but in others, both hmm. living and unliving. I haven't figured that out yet. The moment you do, I would love some wings. Oh I believe God. that would break the masquerade. Oh, come on. Be advised. Hmm. It is true, depending on the change, one must be careful. The things that I suspect Isaac can now do, he should probably not in front of prying eyes. Yes, you, correct. Can you change a white? A white? Oh, yeah. ah, ah, this is One of I the was, mindless. I was going to bring this up. Um, there is one in our territory. An intruder. Yes. I believe it was, hmm. my working theory is that because of a building that is being built in our territory, a large skyscraper, um, this thing was disturbed hmm. and let out from underground. Interesting. How do you plan to test your theory? We've met it. Yes, we tangled with it for a little bit before we were interrupted and it escaped. Hmm. I see. Can you make it can you make it better? No. Also, also how no. like how is a white maid? Can you like make one? Not use like in general. You are all familiar with the animus inside you that whispers and urges you to do things that perhaps you would prefer not to do, or perhaps you would hmm. prefer to do if you had your way. This other half of us, this, some might say, inhuman half, is always there, always ready to urge you to be something other than human. A white is merely one of us that has lost that struggle. If you do not safeguard that human side of you and find a way to maintain it, or at least to balance it, the same fate awaits you also. <gasps> I was right. And the only way to get rid of it no, hold on, that's not all of it. What do you mean? Someone told us that this white was a Sabbat project gone wrong. If that were the case, literally any of us have the capacity and capability to become a white. So what did the Sabbat do that made this different? 
Perhaps you did not understand me. If you surrender completely to your beast, and the last shred of your humanity mm. is gone from you, that is what you will become. And the Sabbat chose to do this? Mm, I must express my appreciation to you, my child. I did not expect this conversation to be quite so diverting. <laughs> my compliments to you on your choice of associates. The Sabbat, as I knew them, I think is different tonight. We think we are static, unchanging creatures, and yes, for the most part, that is true. But the Sabbat have, in what ways I could not guess, somehow adapted to these new nights. They are not as I knew them, even a century ago. Mm -hmm. It is possible, of course, that this white, this creature, was a member of that sect that failed to adapt. I know little of their specific practices. I have heard many things, but I have not verified them for myself. What I can tell you is that it seems that the Sabbat were all once as we are, mm. embraced but they have chosen to find a path that is neither human, nor mortal, nor it is unique. Some say they embrace a specific use of the word, their own beasts, and allow the creature within themselves to have its way. And in doing so, they strip the humanity from them and yet somehow do not fall like the creature you encountered. Instead, they become something else. Something mm, I think they would tell you more than human. A thin blood told me it's better to listen to your beast. Ah, the harbingers of doom, according to some. Do you agree? I myself do not recall ever meeting one of the thin-blooded, of, though of course one hears legends and rumors. Some believe in a religious text, the Book of Nod, that speaks of a great calamity or apocalypse for our kind to be uh, instigated or heralded by these thin-bloods, but I could not say how. And I dare say that anyone who says they know the truth, is either deluded or a liar. Hmm. It is common and I'm sure fairly evident by this point that most kindred lie. Ah, hmm. we are <laughs> the most unreliable of narrators. Many of us know very little beyond what we experience personally or what we have been told. How did you learn this much? I am old and I have come from places where I could learn from others. My relationship with my own sire was satisfactory. There was? Absolutely. They're not around anymore? Not to the best of my knowledge. I'm sorry. Huh. I believe that thank you is the correct response. The fact that we were told this white was a spot project gone wrong could very much be hearsay, or a lie, or a mistake. Did the individual who told you this have special knowledge? It was one of the Hakata, the... Mm, um, the necromancers. Yes. Never my favorites. <laughs> I would be very cautious in your dealings. 
very cautious indeed. But they do traffic with the dead, and I do not refer to us. I refer to whatever lies beyond the shroud of true death. Ghosts, if you will. Yeah, I kind of assumed a ghost would be a reliable narrator in that it situation. Is. Ghosts could lie. Or at least only say what they knew in life. Or throw books at you. It was a rude skull. You did try and manipulate it. Okay. Also, if I try to like dominate someone's ghost in some bones and the worst you can do is throw books, like I'm not gonna be scared of you. I don't really care about what Kat told us. The Hakata are a f recent phenomenon. Hmm. They have a, a, a lineage that is quite ancient, of course, but not as ancient as some of us. Hmm. Some of us were first. Oh. And these latecomers, like the Tremere and the Hakata, are mere Johnny come lately. <laughs> but things may have changed. I do not get out much. So if a white is just us um, in like a horrible, inevitable future, same rules apply to get rid of them? Or is there like a special? Yes, they can be destroyed by the same means that you or I could. Fire, of course, is sovereign against our kind, but if you hit it enough, it will eventually stop moving. The difficulty is that they have lost all reason. Mm. They exist only for the hunt and the kill. They have perhaps, you might say, an animalistic cunning that guides them, but they have no care for what they hurt and what they destroy. It will not stop until it is stopped. If you have one hunting your territory, mm. you will unfortunately need to remove it. Yes, that was the plan. If for no other reason, then it takes what it is yours. Yes. The people of your land. And this is unacceptable. Yes. Okay. The Sabbat, hmm. it has reached my ears that they have other concerns in other parts of the world, but it does not surprise me completely that they might reappear here. If that is the case, these nights will be very interesting. How long have you been awake? Not terribly long less than a decade. Mm. It has not been easy to catch up, and I fear there are probably gaps in my knowledge as well. And I this. am afraid I am not a well connected to the world as it is now. I know so much about the world. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> Interesting, an exchange of information. Yeah. It's mm. only fair. We could start a book club, perhaps. Huh. I love books. I awoke into a, an era of a new inquisition. Yes. Oh. They were not such a problem when I was young. Yes, we spoke about this, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Humans yeah. who... No, 100%. Hunt. Yes. My sire and my sire's sire would tell me stories of a much older world, the burning times, the medieval times which I did not experience, when Holy Mother Church burned at the stake unfortunates and the innocent and, of course, vampires. And now it seems there is a new inquisition, only instead of stakes and fire, they use technology to find and kill us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Masquerade's a little harder to uphold when there's Cell phones uh, and the internet. A bruja warned us that something was coming. Ah, well, yes, she did. A supposed revolutionary from Los Angeles. Mm. Do you have 
the thing that she gave you? No, I did not bring it. I felt that would be rude. This rebel gave you something? Ah, yes. Um, I acquired a stake from them. Something that was used on them. Interesting souvenir. Yes. I believe she was distracted and forgot she had given it to me. Mm -hmm. But it is um, not something you bring to polite company. Perhaps not. Well. I have one more question. I'm so sorry. You keep apologizing. It is an unusual experience from clan of rulers. Say what you would like to know. So, everything I've been hearing from you, the learning, we have to go find our elders. You are bottlenecks for information, and I'm grateful, but it feels short-sighted that there isn't more access to information. And I remember what we learned about Shreknet? Yes. Are you aware of that? It was um, something the, as far if I am to uh, remember correctly, the Nosferatu created, which was sort of an information hub in the, uh, on computers. If it was created by the diggers, then I am sure that it is best gone. Well. It sounds awful. It was the partial creation, or at least a consequence, was the creation of the Second Inquisition. Hmm. I have not made the study of this new burning time, but perhaps I shall. It is, um, while on paper seemed like a good idea, it led to the discovery, uh, mortals being more aware that we existed. You will find that despite its flaws, and there are many, the Camarilla, or Camarilla, depending on your favorite pronunciation. By and large, in general, does a better job of educating its young than other philosophies and factions. Hmm. Often, kindred find their way into the anarch movement specifically because they lack that education. Where else shall they go? Hmm. Who else will help them? Interesting. It has become very evident that my situation is less than common. Yeah. Certainly among the faction you choose to associate with, yes. Yes. It seemed the better of the two, considering. Now then, I have an important errand that I must undertake this evening. So, as delightful as our time together has been, and I hope there will be future such delights. I am afraid I can spare the time for one additional question each. Someone else can go first. You mentioned the uh, Camarilla raise their child or more commonly, and there's more of a uh, more of a relationship after an embrace. Why then, when someone is turned and not met with a sire, do they want to get rid of that? Hmm. They may have many reasons. It might be preference for blood or clan. It might be that your sire is known to someone and they do not care to have you in the club for that reason. Mm -hmm. But I think, to be direct, it is simply ignorance and fear of the unknown and the outsider. Sometimes it's always the simplest answers. Yes, I find this to be true at least half the time. Have you ever met a Ravnos before? Yes. What were they like? Hmm. 
He was capricious and well-read, knowledgeable in many things, for he had traveled wildly, despite the dangers inherent in moving from place to place for us, especially in these nights. He covered a, a great deal of ground, and his stories of the people he met and the places he had seen were most entertaining. But mm, I could not say I liked him. Argus? Is he still here? He's my sire. <laughs> That's wow. very funny. A very illuminating evening indeed, then. Your sire, the Greek kindred known as Argos. I owe you a boon, a favor, to use a more modern term. You are unaware of it, but you have just given me knowledge that I have long sought and that is of great value to me. I am in your debt, and you may call upon me when you wish, for what you wish, if it is within my power to grant it, I will do so without complaint. I, but if I Argus is your sire, and he has your mother, hmm, well, won't this be interesting? Very, very interesting. Argus. Hmm. Well, what I... about the, what about your other guest, my child? What about Miss Fuego? Have you a last question? No, but thank you. I think I've had enough of questions. My child, you visit so seldom. Is there anything that you would ask of me? No, I appreciate you letting us come here and letting me bring these companions of mine, but, and also, I didn't understand before, but now I do, and I appreciate that you didn't tell me what I can and cannot do. It was tempting to reveal all, but as I think you will agree, for you, it will be much more enjoyable, this path of discovery. Yes, it, it is. I have some ideas of things to do, um, but that's for a different time, and I know you have to go, so I very much appreciate your time, and thank you for letting us come. It has been my great pleasure to have you in my home. He rises from his chair. I stand up. up so I stand up. I fish into my purse and grab a nearly dead Kindle. <laughs> uh, can I, do you, here there's a bunch of books on here if you're trying to catch up on like, what? No, no, yeah, what? go go ahead. Here you go, I don't. Give him the charger as well. I have a, I have like a there's pocket no charger. no electricity on this island. I, look, I think he can find it. I accept your gift with. It's got some of my favorites on there. Great appreciation. Yeah. He doesn't okay. touch it, <laughs> oh, but he indicates a small table where oh, you can yeah, place yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Book club. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. And I head immediately towards the door. <laughs> you leave the decrepit old building behind you and emerge back into the night, which seems like the appropriate place to pause our vampire story for now.
Hey everyone, I'm Yev, uh, here from New York City now. Uh, Victor sent me out here to do some tech work for a friend of his. I haven't quite met up with them yet, but, uh, but either way, very exciting to be sent on the location. Uh, now back to the blazing uh, Big Apple, as they call it. Lots of fun things about the, uh, the Big Apple. Uh, it's, got, it's got apples, uh, they're huge. Uh, the, the nice thing about it is I, I tend to retain my memory out here. Back on the West Coast, uh, I would lose entire days, uh, which was super strange uh, and, and very weird. Uh, but Victor never seemed to be bothered by that in my, my memory lapses, so that was good. Uh, it didn't affect my employment, uh, which is great. Uh, love everything about it, uh, I guess. And well, anyway, now that we're out here in the Big Apple, uh, I'm, uh, I'm helping some of his friends, uh, or at least I'm supposed to be, hopefully soon, uh, when they reach out. But um, I wanted to, to tell you uh, the same thing that I'm going to tell them, which is, uh, if you go to backblaze.com slash NY by night, that's N-Y-B-Y-N-I-G-H-T, you can start a free trial of Backblaze. We'll back up everything on your computer. It's your movies, photos, music, videos, contracts, covenants, I don't know, things that are important to fancy business people like Victor and I'm sure everyone out there uh, as well. And you'll have a copy of it available to you wherever you are, uh, maybe on your computer, maybe on your phone, maybe on your other mobile devices, iPads? I don't know. Something. Anyway, go to backblaze.com slash NY by night, N-Y-B-Y-N-I-G-H-T. Give yourself a free trial. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm Yev, by the way. Uh, don't know if we've met, but uh, I'm Canon. Uh, Victor says that all the time. I'm not quite sure what that means, but, uh, but that's who I am. And we'll see you next time.
Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. The finale of season one, Virtue Overthrow. We are back in the South Bronx where Michael and Angela, your ghouls, are waiting for you, Isaac, in your vehicle. Yes. Which has been tagged. Did you? I, I don't remember doing it. I, I would be really proud of myself if I did. Angela and Michael uh, greet you with some small embarrassment. Um, yeah, look, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know who he was. He just sort of ran by and pssst. Can I investigate? So yeah. I want to investigate the tag. Do I have to roll for that? It's mm -hmm. fine. Yes. It's a really quick and dirty job, but let's see if it has any additional meaning. Hmm. Let's roll intelligence and... Mm -hmm. hmm, Shall we say crafts or let, no? Let's say streetwise, Sarah. Okay, intelligence, streetwise, three. Okay. Three successes. Three successes. Well, to the unaware, to the ordinary eye, it might seem just like a few really hastily sprayed black and blue lines. Whoever did it had two cans. Mm. Double wielding, interesting. Yes. But there is a message in it. Your time on the streets as the preeminent tagger in the Bronx has of course allowed you to witness an innumerable number of tags. Some excellent, some very artistic, and some very, very crude. But the particular design you've seen before. Hmm. And according to your tagger friends, it's a simple warning used by more than a few local street gangs. And it simply means get out. Oh, no. What? Somebody's trying to warn us. I oh. decided it wasn't a good idea to shoot him, so. That's fair. That's didn't see him. Fair. I didn't get a clear look. Uh, had, a, had a big hoodie on. It's a warning. We're in danger. Well, I mean, so what else is new, right? <laughs> but if somebody was worried enough about you guys to tag the car, a very nice car, it's not normal danger. Well, well we can have this, you know, first. <sighs> yeah, let's let's get in the car. And okay. Go. It is very possible it is not necessarily us, but more my association that they're mad at. They would know the car? It's very possible. There aren't too many people out on the streets at this late hour and in this cold. It's supposed to be spring, early spring to be fair, but winter just won't seem to release its grip. I... The sky is overcast and you think it might snow. I think it... I think we should really take care of the white, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be done. Let's make our way back to the that bridge, shall we? Try not to get hit by a car this time. <sighs> but yes, remember I am technically affiliated with a street racing gang. Right. So it is very possible that it is of more minor concern. Okay. I will have to clean Sounds my car. like you're yeah. going on a white hunt. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well. Uh, so, what do you want to do, boss? You want to do like we did last time? Just drive around until we see it? I mean, I mean, it seems like our best option. We don't really have an idea of how to track it. Could I use Sense of the Beast? Hmm. As like a beacon type thing? Interesting. It's a passive power. And it certainly would allow you to determine whether or not the individual you're looking at is a supernatural creature. It does have to be 
defended against. Resolve plus animalism versus composure and subterfuge. Yes, I think it's worth a try. All right, sir, so uh, same drill as last time. You want me to drive around until we see uh, a monster eating somebody? Is I that believe that's our best, if somewhat depressing, plan. Do you want to check in with the uh, neighborhood watch, see if they've heard or seen anything recently? Oh, yeah. Oh, Angela. Yes, sir. Do you have a spare knife on you? Of course, sir. May I see it? Absolutely. She reaches under her coat and produces combat knife. Whoa, hold on. What are you going to do? I know you just figured out how to change your body, but don't cut pieces off of you. That's jumping to an extreme conclusion. I was going to give it to Sarah so she could defend herself. Ooh, free knife. Oh. <laughs> um, last yeah, time yeah go, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, sorry. Yeah. Were you worried about him? It, look, he I just... Wore... <sighs> Can we just go? Wow. Okay. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I killed the moment. <sighs> Say it. It was going to be really nice, probably. I put the knife in my pocket. You take the knife from Angela and put it in your pocket. Okay, now you have a knife. Nice. Oh, Angela, I got a better gun. So thank you. I got it. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yes. So <laughs> I pull it out. Hmm. That is very nice. It's brand new also. Yeah. Forgive me for asking. Do you know how to shoot it? We got to stop. Y yes. I promise. We should go to a firing range sometime. Well, I know where they all are. Okay. There's one over in the Throg's Neck, I think, that you might enjoy. Look, we'll just practice on the white and see who can hit center mass more. This will be fun. You might understand, sir, that this is a mission to destroy. Yes. Put it, it down. Yes. And Would be the preferable outcome. Do we know anything about it? Treat it as though it were one of us. Hmm. Well, we don't have any special equipment, but... No, we don't. So, you will be... The stake. Yes, the stake. Could we go get it? We don't have to go get it. Can it's we, in the like, car. Make a new it's one? It's in the car? Yes. Oh, what? Why would I leave it at home? <sighs> uh -huh. Do I understand that you <clears throat> have brought along the stake that yeah, Annabelle the gave you? Yes, it's in the back. If it is something that can be used, it will be used. But I would prefer Angela to not use it. Mm. Mm. Staking, I'll go ahead and take it. If you want. Staking, uh, staking in a fist fight with one of your kind is really not as easy as it sounds. It is not, but it is an option if we can restrain it and then someone use it. Worth having it with us at we least. We take an arm each and somebody takes the back. The... Okay. You will, Angela, be back up if extremely necessary, just watching our backs for any other things. Uh, because I would prefer you not to get torn apart. I prefer that too. Hmm. But... I would prefer to keep the stake as much as possible because I am partial to it. Um, but if it becomes useful, it becomes useful. So. Let me make a quick reference check for you, Seraph. Mm. Do you have any, like, other weapons? <sighs> Not really. I don't feel like biting the thing. Ew, don't. I mean, it's proved effective, but... I don't like the way the look of the way that guy would taste. Ooh. Probably not. Mm. It, um... I believe you just haven't had good luck, I think. You can do better if the opportunity presented itself. Ah, uh, story of my life. <laughs> These new um, things I'm going to attempt will take me a moment to configure. So, I'll let you handle it for a moment before I join. Are you gonna be like vulnerable? Should we kinda? No, okay. not particularly, just. Extending bones takes a little bit of time. What? Like what? what? What are you talking about? 
No worries. Oh my God. Angela leans over and whispers to Michael, yeah, it's a whole new thing. I'll fill you in later. And Sorry, do, you, I haven't had time. do you still think that the knife thing was leaping to conclusions? Not at all. Oh my God. Why would I use it on my, I'm confused as to what you thought I was I going agree to do with, with the you. knife. <laughs> I don't. Wow. Okay. Thanks for the warning. Never so. mind. Yeah, we'll be first wave. You do your bone thing. Oh God. I know what this deal is. Huh. I look forward to seeing more bone. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna sit in silence for the rest of this drive. I'm gonna keep scanning. <laughs> hmm. Well, as Michael drives, following a similar route as before, weaving in and out of the underpasses that thread through the streets of the South Bronx. You can't use it on absolutely everyone, of course. There are too many people on the sidewalks, in the bars, tagging, hmm. driving. But if you limit it to just those individuals who you see through the windows in the vicinity of the underpasses, might be more efficient. So we're gonna do this a little differently. Three turns and out. So let's make your dice pool. Mm -hmm. And it is resolve plus your animalism. So two Clue. for animalism, three yeah. for resolve. Make sure your pool has your hunger die in it. Correct. Okay. Three successes. Three successes, wow. That's your first roll is three successes. Mm -hmm. Make two more rolls. No successes. Zero successes on the second roll. Four, three successes. And three on the third. Mm -hmm. So, you hunt you know roughly where to look since you've seen it once in a place like this and other people have as well. You drive through the night and the later it gets, the fewer people there are. There's never no people, not in New York City, but closer you get to the middle of the night in the early hours, the fewer there are. What tips you off, Seraph? Uh, what tips you off is a flare of light that's there and not there. The figure that you land on with your preternatural gaze simply is different from everybody else that you've looked at so far. It's definitely a kindred. You've used this power before to determine levels of hostility, but this one is overflowing with rage, with anger, with absolute pure hostility to everything around it. It's a figure that's half striding, half loping along in the shadows of an expressway overpass near the Major Deegan. Not too far, I should say, right under the Major Deegan, not too far from a particular condominium project where you've spent some time recently. Mm. Okay, I think we found it. It's following someone. Okay. You are not sure that the person it's following knows they're being followed. Um, how far are they away? Well, as you pass by, looking out the window, just a few feet away. Okay. I'd like to cast chemistry, and I'd like to tell them to, to turn around. Mm, interesting. And run. You're driving by. You have to make a very quick decision. Michael doesn't know it's there. No one said anything, so he's not slowing down. 
Mm -hmm. and you are trying to create an illusion that will get the attention of this person and yeah. hopefully alert them to their danger. I'd like to I'd like Risky. to also alert Michael. At the same time? Yes. What do you want to tell him? I say, um, you know, I, I point in the direction that the person that it's following is and it, Michael that way, and then at the same time I try to cast chemistry. All right. Make a rouse check first. I get hungrier. Well, now we're getting down to it, my girl. Now we're getting down to the bone. Someone's looking for you. Hmm. For me? The only thing that I'm looking for is you <laughs> to kill. Get out there and give me something good to drink. For once, we might almost be on the same page. Wow. Progress. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? What illusion do you want to make that's fast because you've only got seconds? Even as Michael is slowing down and looking for a place to turn in a way that doesn't get you all hit by traffic. I like to create some kind of like street sign that mm. just says, you're in danger, run. You're in danger, run. Yeah. I think you'll have to reduce the complexity of it. Danger, run. How about just run? Run, great. Hmm. Interesting. Love the collaborative process. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your role is manipulation and obfuscate. Okay. Two, and then three, so one, two, three, four, five. One success. Three success, or wait, no, four success. Four successes. The person stops, looks around, bewildered, checks again to see if what they saw was real, and starts sprinting nice. up the street, away from the underpass. The thing, the creature, shambles quickly after it. Okay, we gotta go. Well, I, I'm looking. I'm, what do you want to do, sir? Let's get out of the car. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you see it? I saw it. Is chasing someone. Michael finally finds a place to, to pull over. Yes, stop as soon as possible. Angela is already out. I'd like to use Soaring Leap. Mm, soaring Leap. So you're going to oh use uh, Potence to catch up to it. Mm -hmm. Do I need to make a fast check? No. Okay, good. No, there's no, there's no cost to using Soaring Leap. Great. But you are immediately leaping and bounding across the road Somebody's horn blares. <laughs> but you make it across safely to the other side mm -hmm. where you saw the creature. Mm -hmm. Are you pursuing? Yeah. Let's see what everyone else is doing now that Michael has found a place to pull the car over where you won't likely get struck again. Um, Isaac. Uh, Isaac is going to jump out of the car. Um, actually, Isaac is going to wait a minute as it, and begin working on something. Hmm. What's your intention here? My intention is to uh, activate my weaponry uh, in a specific form uh, to be as l l the least masquerade violating as it could be. <laughs> mm, interesting. You're not well practiced at this no. yet. Um, make a uh, roll your resolve in Protean. Will do. Five successes. Five Ooh. successes. Okay. Your hands. Yes, what I want to do is draw, basically draw the bone from here to make sort of like a blade come up and around the tips of my fingers to keep a similar shape that a hand would have, but just be bladed around mm. here. So you are creating, Yes. sculpting quickly yeah, it An takes me a turn. Osseous blade mm -hmm. along the edge of your forearm, extending oh to the tip of your finger. Yeah. And those of you in the car who see this, behold something that might be experienced 
in a horror movie. He's actually extruding the bones of his arms to create a bladed weapon that's fused to his forearms. You good? Yeah, I'm great. It's a good blood. All right. Go, 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 go. go. Okay. go. You weren't supposed to wait for me. Okay. Sorry, I got lost in the moment. Very uh, distracting. I jump out of the car and I'm sprinting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moment we hit uh, an area where there are fewer people and we have a bit of room, uh, I want to bite the inside of my own arm to bring a little blood out to bring him out. Ah, to use his bait. Yeah. Someone's got to be it. Someone's got to be. Where's your pistol? Oh, on my. I keep it tightly tucked. It's on my hip. <laughs> on your hip. Ray. Knowing what kind of event this was going to be, and the fact that you usually don't wear your suit jacket in the car anyway, because it gets wrinkled when you sit on it, uh, I'm ready to run. You're ready to run. And as soon as uh, I'm in an area that's not too crowded, I'm going to rouse the blood to run a little faster. Rouse the blood. Make a rouse check. Hungrier. <laughs> Starting strong. You don't know why these kindred that you associate with talk about voices in their heads. It's it's never a voice. Never heard one. It's just hungry. Hmm. So, breaking the traffic, getting across the road, running, redoubling your efforts, trying to move faster. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, make a strength and athletics check, please. Strength and athletics. Woof. Zero successes. No successes at all. Starting off strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is how my dice roll. <laughs> so, you're basically running no faster than Fuego at this time. But it's not that far ahead. But Seraph's going to get there first. Mm. Because she's called upon her supernatural strength to close the distance very, very quickly. Now... The white, your quarry, has reached shadows of another underpass. Mm -hmm. So, you've kept your eyes on it, mm -hmm. following the supernatural emanations of hunger and hatred up the street. People get out of your way. Hey, watch it, move it. Sorry. What are you doing? Hey, slow down. Uh. Underpass, though, no one lingers there. No one likes to walk in the shadows. There's not much under here. Deep recesses, of course. A lot of shadows. Dripping concrete. A few empty trash cans, sometimes. People build fires in those things. Pieces of timber, rebar, a lot of trash down here. Pieces of wood? For various sizes. Any of them sharp? They could be made sharp pretty quickly. Okay. If you broke some. But at the moment, until your associates catch up to you, it's just you and the white. Mm -hmm. It's given up on catching it sprinting prey. And instead, as you approach and it hears your footsteps, turns to look at you. There's just nothing in its eyes. No individuality, no emotion, except the need to eat. I take the knife out. Are you planning to attack? What's it doing? It's waiting to rip your throat out. Then I attack. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right. You are uh, it's a dexterity and melee for you. Yeah. Five total. Yep. Let's go. Two successes. Two successes. It has absolutely no finesse at all. It merely leaps with its hands, 
fangs bared. It's got a lot of dice. Mm. A lot of dice, but not so many successes. Let's see. Okay. Its margin is three. So, it leaps at you, and unfortunately your knife doesn't find its target. Mm. It finds its target, however, mm. and simply backhands you again, <sighs> smashing you to the ground. It's only superficial damage. It's three, and you have it. Okay. I'm gonna get up and charge at it again. One more turn before the next of your associates gets here. Mm -hmm. six, One success. Six successes. Oh. One moment, it's in front of you. Your knife finds nothing but air. Mm. The next moment, it's behind you. You can feel its grip around your arms. Uh. You can feel the teeth ripping through your leather jacket, uh. tearing into the flesh uh. beneath. Three points of damage. Oh, you, wait, you're wearing a leather jacket, aren't you? Yeah. Now these are teeth. These are fangs. These are the natural weapons of another kindred. The damage is two but it's aggravated. It's incredibly painful. There's none of the pleasure, the bliss of the ordinary kiss. There's just ripping and tearing and awful pain. Now, for you, Seraph, that is a significant injury. Mm -hmm. Isaac. Yes. Blades. Yes. As you approach the scene, racing forward, you can see the white has grappled with Seraph and is busily trying to devour her. Ugh. It has no knowledge that you are there. It's too busy trying to gulp down her blood and flesh. Ugh. Okay, so uh, Isaac runs up behind it, immediately taking both the sides of his forearms and just slamming them down into the neck, at like a scissoring motion right on the neck of the creature. Hmm. Disgusting, but perhaps effective. <laughs> so. Strength and brawl. Strength and brawl. Four successes. Four successes. The bone blades slam home. Now. These count as feral weapons? Yes, they count as uh, unhalved superficial damage plus two. So the incoming damage is not cut in half. Well, now you have its attention. It ceases to try to chow down on your associate <laughs> as and screams in rage. Anyone you who is on the sidewalk nearby is now moving in very different directions <laughs> to get away from this horrible sound. You must learn not to run ahead. I'm sorry. Ray and Fuego and Angela all reach the scene at the same time. Angela, she has her gun out, but she doesn't have a clear shot without hitting either Isaac or Seraph. Fuego? Uh, yeah, I think she's just raising her head from a kind of ripping a little hole into her forearm and is like, and smears the blood. I need his attention and I need him so, to go this way. You are willing the blood to the surface, yeah. trying to get it to pay attention to you. Are you spattering it around? Are you waving it in the air? Are you painting uh, I think painting I smear it up my arm and then like try to shake off a few drops in front of me. Make a rouse check. I'm okay. Not hungry. You do not get hungrier. With a roar, the creature's head snaps around. It's struggling with Isaac at the moment, but its eyes are on you now. It champs its teeth together. It's actually lacerating its lips with its own fangs, trying to reach you, like a shark trying to eat a diver. 
through a safety cage. At the moment, oh, sorry. Oh, Ray? Uh, I'm gonna jump in and try and help Isaac hold it. You kind wanna of, try to grapple? I know what, yeah, I know what Fuego's trying to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm almost grabbing it by the neck and forcing it to look Fuego's direction. Strength and brawl. Uh, Three successes. One, two, three, four, five successes. You just can't get a grip on it. It shrugs you off and you can feel the frighteningly strong muscles of its undead flesh tense and flinch you off. You're gonna have to do this together. Angela keeps maneuvering around, looking for a clear shot, finding one, she takes it. Above the sounds of the traffic, the report of the pistol rings out. Every shot finds its target. Doesn't even stop moving. It's trying to twist itself around Fuego. It's trying to get past Isaac and those spurs that are stuck in its back to eat your face off. Rude. So, Seraph. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, if it's if it's distracted, can I take a, an attack of opportunity and try to? Hmm. An attack of opportunity, trying to Stab weave it. in, yeah. duck in quickly mm-hmm. while it's being distracted and while mm-hmm. it's being held? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Dexterity and melee. Would you like to call upon the power of your blood to increase your capabilities? Yes, I would. Make a rouse check. I get hungrier. Ah, yes, finally, the thrill of the chase, the taste of the hunt. Take its blood, drink its power. I'm, I'm barely keeping it together right now. I've got other things I gotta focus on. Details, details. Mm, it's a pool of five, correct? That's correct. Yes, but you, you surge, so you have okay. two dice. You oh, add yeah. two yeah. dice because of the, uh, the blood right. surge. Yeah. However many dice. Oh, no. Three successes. Three successes, mm-hmm. okay. Finally, you have the satisfaction of scoring a direct hit on this thing. The blade stabs through bone, cartilage, and finds something. It grunts in pain. Can't decide who to kill. Now you've got it surrounded. Each of you making your way in a circle in the shadows of the underpass around this thing. Two of you are in close combat. One has been shrugged off, and you, Fuego, are still trying to distract it. So, Fuego and Ray, what are we doing? I'm annoyed by this. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump back in there and make sure that if everything goes south, this thing can't run away, so. How do you intend to do that? I'm gonna activate prowess. Mm-hmm. So I can do a little bit more damage. Mm-hmm. That's a rouse check to you. Success on the rouse check. Do not get hungrier. Mm. And I'm gonna come in and kind of sliding tackle this thing's knees and see if I can break a knee. You can try to take it out. Mm-hmm. Make sure it can't run away yeah. easily. Okay. Because that's how it got away last time. That's right. Go ahead and make the uh, strength and brawl. Actually, let's make it strength and athletics. Strength and athletics. Mm -hmm. I don't have surge on this one. Oh, Uh, shit. I could, though. Oh. Could I not? Yeah, do it. You could certainly tempt fate and make another rouse check. Let's see what happens. Success. (laughs) Fate is kind. Add two extra dice to the pool. It all doesn't mean a thing if I roll terribly. You got this. Three successes. Three successes. Mm. Messy critical. Let's do it. However, the situation is unusual. There are several combatants 
one sticking a knife into it, one trying to shish kebab it with bone spear, uh, spurs growing from his arms. The smell of blood waving in the night air, maddening it even further, making it even less aware of itself than it usually is. Bullets, and now this. Mm -hmm. You make the sliding tackle, twisting yourself in and under it, trying to bring your full weight and the force of your momentum to bear. And you are successful up to a point. You hear something give way, snap, in one of its legs, and it does go down. Those of you who are standing around it will be able to attack it without it being able to fight back from its prone position. But in doing so, it's rolled over and pinned you underneath it and is busy pressing its claws into your neck mm. and your face. The difference, the margin, let's see, it's fine. you had three successes? I had three successes. You had three successes, so. And then there's extra damage mm -hmm. for the prowess. The messy critical for a creature like the white that no longer has any serious attachment to its humanity. Mm. Its beast lashes out and it does something you haven't seen before. Its fangs elongate. They grow almost serpentine, curving, dagger-like as they reach for your face. They puncture your cheek and under your chin and chew together mm -hmm. for two points of aggravated damage. It's extraordinarily painful, <laughs> and I must ask you to roll your unspent willpower. Oh, unspent willpower. Three successes. Three successes. The provocation is significant. You barely maintain control of yourself. You can feel the creature inside you, urging you to just lose it, to return bite for bite, claw for claw, misery for misery. And yet, you manage to stay yourself. I'm trying real hard not to kill this thing. Fuego. What? Uh, she mm. just fully screams. Uh, and I wanna rush in and I wanna pull out the mag light, flip it to the like blunt force end and I'm gonna try to knock its teeth out. Hmm. Brawl? Yeah. And strength. Can I blood surge? Roll it. You don't get hungrier. Add two dice to your roll, but make sure to include your hunger dice. Um, two, three, four, five. Zero successes. No successes. What face came up on the blood dice, on the hunger dice? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Hmm. Okay. Pistol still in your holster. You've got the blunt end of the flashlight trying to hit it, but it's just not getting anywhere. So, last round. Isaac? So, just to be clear, it is face down towards the ground on top of Ray. That's right. Anything you stab through it may actually go through it. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah, why not? I'm gonna stake it. So you're going to pull out the that stink. from behind and back in my belt. Cross that you took from Annabelle, but that is now yours, is that right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, won't this be very interesting? So it's a called shot. Mm-hmm. It's at minus two. Mm-hmm. 
and you've got to do at least five damage Great. to get through to the heart. Okay. Make the roll. Is it dex and melee? Or is it's it a melee weapon, so yes, it is. Yes, I will surge. Make a rouse check. I don't get hungrier. You do not get hungrier. Four successes. Four successes. Yes. I can't Unfortunately, get any more than that. Five successes are required to smash through the rib cage into the right place. You drive the stake in, it does damage the creature. It shows evidence of being hurt, but unfortunately, no. So close to a critical. Seraph? Can I take the back end of the knife and, and, and hammer it in further? So it gets closer to the heart? Yes. Okay, I'd like to do that, please. And as you are doing this, the thing is going to roll over and try to injure whoever is attacking it. Okay. Let's make it strength and brawl. Okay, uh, can I surge? You have already surged, so okay. it remains with you for the scene. Okay, so oh. a pool of seven. You can feel it tensing beneath you and above you, Ray. Mm. It's getting ready to leap. It wants out of here. Okay, it's we've had got enough. two successes and mm. a bestial failure on a hunger die. So it's just two successes. So just two just successes. Just two successes. You can roll willpower roll up. I would like to do that. I would like to burn a <laughs> willpower. You can absolutely spend a point of willpower, take superficial willpower damage, and re-roll up to three failed dice. Three failed dice, okay. Mm. There we go. Uh, four. So four. Addition, so that's six. So total. six total. Yes. <laughs> it also has six, but the tie goes to the oh. active yes. kindred. <laughs> <laughs> so, using John the Wick hilt style. of your weapon, yeah, you smash the stake in even further before it can spin around and bite you. The effect is instantaneous. Its limbs lose all volition. It simply freezes in place and collapses face down on the pavement. We're not done. Okay. It's not dead. What do you mean? It's paralyzed. <laughs> That's what happens when you stake something, it gets paralyzed. As soon as the stake comes out, it will come back, it'll reanimate, so. We have to burn it? Or this, and Don't. Music. Don't what? What? <laughs> Spitting through blood of my, on my face. Don't kill it. What? Why? <sighs> I need this thing. Why? Why? You can't have it. Angela approaches and says, look, sir, I'm sure this is all very important, but we, we are going to attract people yes. here. Look, we don't have time. I was asked to get proof that this existed. Take a picture. For who? If you... Look, Spit sir. Spit it out. Now, I, I want to cast Mesmerize. I, I need this. <laughs> Mesmerism. <laughs> Dominate power. In the middle of this heated conversation, <laughs> below the overpass, traffic hurtling by in either direction. On a cold mind. New York night. Oh, okay. So, uh, look, manipulation and dominate. On Swayable Mind will give you a bonus on your resistance, uh, Ray. Mm-hmm. Your resist, oh, let's rate the rouse check first, Margo, for mesmerism. Oh, sweet. I get hungrier. <sighs> well, who would have thought that you would be so devious. I approve, but I think you should in fact drink his blood instead. It will be faster and it will be much more satisfying for me. You know you've wanted to taste him. You know you've longed just for a little taste of him. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Your role is manipulation and dominate. Ray, 
Your role is intelligence and resolve. Uh, do I still have my surge from earlier? Cool. But your surge was for. Oh, it was for a different thing. For a, a completely different attribute. Can I? Surge you want to search for no? this? Yes, you can tempt fate one more time. Can I take a picture of the white while this is happening on my phone? With your phone? Yes. You can do whatever you like with its collapsed, inert, staked body. Click. I get hungrier. <sighs> How many hunger is that for you? Three. I also have three. Ah, uh, you're wasting my time. Just drink him. He wants it as much as you do. Shut up. How many successes did you get on the roll? And Ray, what is your success? Result. Let's compare. Six successes. This is the biggest dice pool I have rolled to date. Nine dice. Yeah. Bestial failure. <laughs> <laughs> you have the option of. I think I'm gonna. No. Bending willpower <laughs> and rerolling. Up to three dice. Up to dice. three? Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Take a point of superficial willpower damage. Oh. Sure, yeah. One success. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, so, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is you didn't suffer a bestial failure and try to murder one of your associates. The bad news is that you're mesmerized. What do you say? Remember, mesmerism is a short uh, but thorough command. Yeah. Explain now. I need this to prove to the Camarilla that I'm worth it to them. <laughs> do whatever you are about to do, Isaac. Great. Isaac just starts sawing at the neck of the white. It is staked. It is helpless. For all intents and purposes, it is in torpor. It cannot defend itself or prevent you from doing what you are doing. And in a moment, you've taken its head away from its neck. And the change in its body is rapid. It begins to melt. No, 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 no! Decompose. <laughs> to sink in upon itself to deteriorate before your eyes. Whatever it was, whoever it was, wasn't old enough to become nothing but ash, like the legends say. What you've got is a kind of a mostly decomposed, greasy, bloody mess seeping into the cold sidewalk under the bridge. Is the steak melting with it? The steak remains completely right, intact. The steak again. Great. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Sir, we have got to go. There to are go. going I to be people Ray here any second. I hope it was worth it. I'm trying text Ray the picture. Yeah. Try and scoop up what is left. No, it's In nothing your hands, recognizable. Maybe into a stray plastic bag, but unfortunately, this is just, just bits and pieces. Mm. Some of it might be recognizable as body parts, but just fucking shake that off my hands. I'm <sighs> heading back towards the car. I walk away in disgust. Michael <sighs> brings the car to you with a screech of tires. Just as people begin to head in your direction at a fast pace. Is everybody getting in? Yes. We need to yeah. go. Margo, Ray. wait. Can we? Oh, fucking, yeah, let's just get in. Get in the car. We need to get out of here. We can talk about this later. Everybody piles in. Michael floors it. Pull away. <laughs> just as a group of volunteer neighborhood watch arrive on the scene, they look surprised to find no one here. So, where to, sir? The long way back to my to the haven. Yes, sir. I sit there, and I need to make three rouse checks to heal aggravated damage to put my hands back to normal. Yes, you do. I need to make some rouse checks to mend. 
I gain one point of hunger. Out of three. So, it has come to this. An interesting choice of uncomfortable decisions. <laughs> yes, it has. And you see his hands, the bone slides back underneath the skin and the f flesh forms back to... Have you no thirst? Have you no desire to sup, to sate us? I do, but it's less important at this particular moment. I disagree. <laughs> yeah. The way I've been rolling, I'm gonna hold off on healing my will, uh, my aggravated damage. Very well, but Seraph, I believe you said you wanted to heal now. You two have six. taken two aggravated mm -hmm. wounds. Two successes and a fail and on my rest. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. You do heal one of the two wounds made <sighs> by its disgusting, filthy mouth. Your jacket's never going to be the same. And you do get hungrier. <laughs> oh, I couldn't be prouder of you. I mean, I'd rather have a little drink, but <laughs> that was magnificent, and so are you. Thank you. A little taste, perhaps. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Isaac would oblige. <laughs> Later. Michael is driving, as instructed. What the fuck? The fuck me? What the fuck with you guys? What the fuck with us guys? You wanted to join the Camarilla? Look. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not in the mood to explain this right now, but I guess we're going the long way home, so why the fuck not? Yeah. I needed that so that I didn't have to tell them about the three of you. Why did you have to tell them anything? Yeah. Because, I, <clears throat> because I was turned in Manhattan. And it's only because of the Camarilla, because of getting away from the Camarilla, that I'm even alive at all. I was turned in Manhattan too. <sighs> Is that why your accent's gone? Yep. Look. I was wondering actually about that because you yeah. sound really different. Yeah. Angela shoves her gun right up against your chest. Shall I shoot him, sir? Not yet. Put the gun Why did the Camarilla even need to know about us? And when have you been fraternizing with the Camarilla? Uh, since day one. Day one? Like all of you. Like all of me what? I have never had inter any interaction with the Camarilla. No, no, you know what? That's unfair. You're weird. You are all part of the Camarilla. You are all part of what's going on in Manhattan, whether you fucking like it or not. Your sire? What, where's he from? Who, tell us about him. Tell us about his deal. What's going on with him? As far as I know, he's one of the Camarilla. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, and yours? You wanna tell us anything about him? He's an artist from Greece, and he's a Ravnos. What are you insinuating? <sighs> Look. My mom lives in Manhattan. She owns a gallery, and she's a ghoul. You, my point is that you didn't have a choice in how you were brought into this world, and I didn't have a choice either. I owe certain things to the Camarilla. I need certain things from them, and I am trying my damnedest not to offer you three up as payment. Because I think I for should shoot some him, reason, I like you guys. If you threaten him one more time, we're gonna have a problem. If you threaten her, we will definitely have a problem. Come no one away. is threatening anybody. No, you All are. I did You're threatening. was ask you not to do something and you very impolitely declined. No, it was not impolite because this is a, a monster in our, but also specifically, my territory. So, we all have an equal stake in the, what happens here, and what we needed to do was remove this from what we own. And if you would let me fucking talk, 
I would have told you that I was going to remove it. How? You were going to drag it all the way? Camarilla? It. Yes! How? What, are you going to put it in a hearse? <sighs> if that thing came out of it, it would attack you and kill you. Or the Camarilla, for that matter. Oh, and you all of a sudden have a problem with it attacking the Camarilla? It's a fucking monster. It so are we all! Not to that degree we're not, unless I've mistaken who you are. Or what you're trying not to be. Why didn't you tell us before? Because I was really hoping that I could get through this without getting any of you involved. Well, that doesn't appear to be the case, does it? Yeah. By your own admission, we're already involved. And now, the only option you seem to have is to turn us in, so... What are you gonna do? <sighs> well, comes down to a choice of who I like more. Right, and your entire life that you so desperately want to get back to is with them, so go make your decision. Tell them about my place. Tell them about Sarah. Tell them about Fuego and inform her sire where she is and bring a bunch of heat down on all of us. Unless you've already done that. If I had already done that, they'd be here. Mm -hmm. So right now, all you have to worry about is people tagging your SUVs. That's not all I have to worry about. That was your people? No, no, I'm saying that's how small your problems are. <laughs> you don't know anything about my problems because I kept them all away from all of you and I didn't involve any of you in any of my problems. And that's literally what I've been trying to do no, with my problems. It is but not. But shocker, not everyone is as good as handling shit as you are. You purposely- Is that all you needed to hear? No. That I'm just not as good at handling the nightly goings on as you are? No, that's literally not what he was saying at all. You're projecting aggressively. You went to them. You had that choice to not go to them and make a different choice. You didn't. You went to see them because you want your old life back. And you'll never get it regardless of if you get your money, so what's the point? It's, it's not. Is it because you want to feel important It's again? not about money. Yes, what? Are you kidding? Yes. So make I would like to feel important. I would like to feel something of my old life. I would like to feel respected. I would like some goddamn respect. You were yes. important to us. Then make it We again. respected you. And yet when I asked you to do something, it took you all of five seconds to not listen to me. Because you lied to us. Because you kept a secret from us. Because and I'm not to say that I should have thrown myself in there, but I got hurt because of us. I wanted to protect us. I wanted to protect what we built here. You're not even speaking with the voice that you had a night ago. And I, and I so let's fully talk own about that. fucking secrets. Great. Everyone's got shit to hide. Sure. And look, I know what I did and I know my partner and I know that if I had to do it all again, I'd do it again but we can't get on him for holding something back. No, but we can for threatening to turn us into the cam. He didn't do that. He just did a minute ago. He said- I said that's my only option now, and I'm really hoping that you will help me find a solution Great. that doesn't involve that. Happy to do so. I had one, and now it's gone. Right. right. How furious are you right now? Yeah, 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 it's bubbling up. Take dice equal to your unspent willpower and make mm. a roll. Just black dice. Three successes. It takes effort. One you, for each of them. It takes effort but the beast stays in its cage and does not come out to play. Despite the fact that you can feel it urging you to solve this the easy way. 
So, sir, if I'm not going to shoot him, what do you want me to do? Shooting him would cause more problems than we are in at the moment. If if he's told the uh, if he's told the camera yes. where we are, what fucking part of he hasn't told them? But even the slightest hint that we exist and that we are important is a problem. And if he made any mistake in his dealings with them, they will find us and they will make our lives very hard because, surprise, specifically the two of us are not welcome here. You, they want. We, they'll kill. She's been getting stuff from the cam in the Fucking jealous. I just defended you. What the fuck? She got a present from her sire. She can't control where her sire came from. Are you you're Smith. worried about the Camaria knowing where you are? The Yeah. Miss Wago, the gun is from your sire. Excuse me, sir. It is. How did you <sighs> get it? It was given to me by uh, another kindred. How did they know? Where you'd be. How do they know how to find you? It was the club that night. Yeah. Richter's club. I would say, sir, that there is an excellent possibility that they already know. And that Fair. anything that Mr. Ray might have told them could have been a test hmm. to mm. see if he would tell the truth. Interesting. It's a theory. Fair. It could be tested. Yes. So, let's try and cool down here. <laughs> We're all working on things. When you say that, Michael uses the electronic window controls to lower the windows <laughs> in the minivan to let in the cold so, night air. Just to recap and get things straight, you wanted to get some of your old stuff back, some of your old life, and decided going to speak to the Camarilla was the way to get this. They then put you up to the task of proving that this said white existed in this territory and you were to bring it to them so they could do God knows what with it. And we messed up your plans. Is that what happened? They wanted at least some shred of proof of my loyalty or devotion or the fact that I wouldn't immediately screw them over. And I got you that. You have a photo of it. Hmm. I feel like, I feel like that's not gonna be enough. Well, maybe it is. Yeah, you didn't even check. A shred? That's a shred. Look, I wanna give them I wanted to give them something more than they ever wanted so that they didn't ever ask for more. That's not how it works. That's a, they will always ask for everything from you all the time. That's how the Camarilla works. That's why I'm not there, apart from that they don't want me. That's why I didn't choose to try and make my way into the Camarilla, because what we get here is not people breathing down our necks all the time. What you get there is them constantly twisting because you are less than them. And they will never want a gangrel in their midst. That's how it works. I'm surprised you didn't pick up on that yet. How many other gangrels are in the Camarilla? How many have you met? None. They are all independent or anarch. That's how it works. <laughs> you know, somebody told me they didn't want uh, La Sombra in the Camarilla either. Yeah. But that seems to have changed in recent nights. Because La Sombra are not animals. I understand what it's like Even to come Angela from a lot. This. But this is not the way you get it back. Look, I'm trying real hard to keep my problems separate from your problems. But they're not. And it's not as clean cut as that. But if we're going to work together, probably... Then you're gonna have to fucking trust me! No! You're going to have to also trust us by telling us things! 
instead of hiding them. Yeah. That's... My God. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. How many let's times have I told honest. you? Let's be honest. Let's let's just get it all out in the open. Let's start Please from do. square one. What's on the it. third floor? Oh wow, is this a great idea, sir? My bedroom. I wanted some privacy. That's literally it. I invited you into my home. I gave you all rooms to stay when you needed them. I wanted a space that was mine privately. So I asked you not to go to the third floor because also that is where I do my art and it's personal. Well, I think there's a simple way to prove that. Fine. If you want to so badly go to my room, you can once and then you will never be welcome in my house again because my house has rules and they are important to me. And I told you those because I asked for you to respect my rules in my house. And I don't know why it's so important. I've told you everything you asked me to tell you and then you got mad at me when you all fucked up and made mistakes. You were angry with me because I didn't tell you enough because you didn't ask. I asked you to ask me if you had questions and you didn't. You then made mistakes and told me, why didn't you tell me? That's not my fault. You're right. Yeah. Great. No, but as you pointed out tonight with your very sire, he has a habit of telling you things after you needed to know them and it was, to quote you, frustrating. You never had a teacher like that? No! I did. No, and that's kind of why I'm like this. Great. You don't have to stay like this. You've learned so much recently, I imagine, from us, about yourself, about your beast, about your place in all this. Hasn't that changed you at all? Haven't we changed you at all? I am... Caring about people more than I ever have. There's something in you before. that cares. I I'm literally here having a conversation, trying to figure out how to make this work with everyone. This, while it may not look like it, this is me trying. I'll try too. I was born to a ghoul and a kindred. I was raised to hold on to a fucking gallery. And the minute that I started to try and live my life, I was turned into a kindred. This is the first time in my entire life that I've known anyone who doesn't just want something from me. And yeah, I'm sure you all want stuff from me. But you seem to give a shit about me. About Seraph. About this thing that I made. To be free. If you care a little bit about that, about us, about me, you'll let us help you. And not by just not doing anything. Because that thing is a weapon when given to people like the Camarilla. And that's why they wanted it because they could do something with it. They could hurt people with it. And I bet they, could, they couldn't care less if it killed you. Because if it killed you, it took away a problem. And you're always gonna be a problem to them. Okay. And I'm, and I'm not okay. saying that for you specifically. I mean, we all are. I, I am, she is, you are, as long as you're not part of them. We're a problem, and so you, Either you did a thing that would either do them a favor, which is bring them a new weapon, or you'd get yourself killed, which also did them a favor. So you don't why? have to be used by them. We're not using you. <sighs> Look, I'm not looking to go there to be a lapdog. But I'm not even looking to go to the Camarilla. I just want to literally not have stakes at my throat when I step into Manhattan. What do you mean? I can't go, like, literally, I can't go into Manhattan. 
Wow. Any one of them sees me in Manhattan and uh, <laughs> it's not likely to end well. I get away with it maybe once on good graces and the fact that I had anything to offer as collateral. And now the one thing that I had that I didn't care about is gone. Whatever they said was gonna happen to us, we will not let that happen. Well, no, to the best of our abilities. To the best of our abilities. We fought that thing and we won. <laughs> yeah, it was messy. What isn't? But we, we did better than last time. <laughs> we didn't get hit by a car. Yeah, but my face looked better last time. <laughs> Where you go? My shoulder did too. Yes, Isaac. Why are you so quiet? Where I grew up, people yell and they fight. And that's okay, because you get somewhere at the end. And I don't have anything to yell about here. We've talked before. Either you're gonna trust us, you're gonna trust me or you won't. I don't think I have anything to say to convince you. So, <clears throat> sir, I want you to try. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. May what? I? Mr. Ray, I realize that I am an only an employee, but from my perspective, this is a tactical problem. And that's my area of expertise. It seems to me that you could plan your way out of this. If this, if my employer and your friends, associates, no, friends, want to, I'm sure there's a way that you can get what you want without giving them exactly what they want. Just requires a little bit of thought and planning with other people involved, not just yourself. And that's the entire reason why we have this group, other than to take care of this neighborhood, as it were, is so that we all don't get picked off individually because that's how you get to be an old, decrepit guy living on an island is that you have people who make it so you don't die. And that's what we have, is us. That's why you don't run right at a white without us following up right behind you. Do you know what happened to your sire's coterie? No, I don't. And it was either terrible Boring. And that's pretty much the only two options. Once you get to a specific age, so far as I am led to understand, is you don't need them anymore and you drift apart when your humanity starts. As it will with every single one of us when we get to be older. But that's many, many, many years from now. So, until then, until we start hating each other for real because we don't have any humanity left in any of us. Let's enjoy working together. For at least a little while. And not throwing each other under the bus. Sarah, if you receive a text message, it's from it. Francis. Francis? What does it say? Spray date, question mark. <laughs> Soon, period, send. Smiley face, red heart. Oh no. Smiley face, that's it. <laughs> hmm. So. 
it gonna be? Four kindred. Racing around the Bronx and now driving the long way home. Ray, what's it going to be? It's not a decision for tonight. Well then, this is indeed the best place to end this vampire story for now. <laughs>